chair of the authority, your excellencies. Uh, let me begin by bringing you greetings from Accra, from your brothers and sisters here in Ghana. And uh, take yeah. the opportunity to welcome President Mbalo from Guinea-Bissau yeah. on his membership of the authority. I'd like to briefly share with you Ghana's experience in responding to this COVID-19 threat. But before doing so, take the opportunity also to extend to President Buhari of Nigeria and President Conde of Guinea on the loss of key aids of theirs to, to, this, to this pandemic. The Ghanaian response has been based on four principles. Firstly, an all Ghana approach, because we recognize that this is not uh, a disease, a threat that can be dealt with only by government. We need to mobilize all the social forces in our country to be able to do so. We're calling upon religious, traditional, uh, academic, scientific, political, and civil societies all to come together in an organa approach to deal with the threat. Secondly, that we are led and informed at all times by science and by our, the data that we are able to assemble. We're also learning from the experiences of governments that are further, of countries and governments that are further down the road in responding to the pandemic. And then finally, we think that it's also an opportunity for us to continue to push ahead with our Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Six key ob objectives have informed the manner in which we have proceeded. One, to try to limit and stop the importation of the virus. We discovered very early on that virtually all the cases of infections we had in Ghana came from travelers into Ghana. So initially we banned travelers from the epicenters from coming and finally we ended up by locking our borders completely. And it has, it has, it has proved to be uh, an, an important tool for us because it's prevented a lot of people who were infected from coming into the country. We saw this where we quarantined all the, uh, the travelers who came at the time of, of the closure of our borders. As far as that's concerned, there's, an, um, there's an, uh, an aspect of it that we cannot overlook, and that is that since the closure of the borders, unfortunately we've had uh, an attempt by several of our uh, West African neighbors to enter the country illegally. I mean, people who have also brought with them uh, the virus because we've discovered that they have also been uh, affected. I think this is something that the regional organization will need to look at. If we have a situation whereby our borders are closed, how therefore we can manage that as strictly as possible so that we don't get it. Secondly, containing the virus. The containing of the virus has been through for us an aggressive process of tracing and testing. And so far, over 85,000 Ghanaians have been tested. We're looking to test as much as 100,000 very soon. And it is, it's enabled us to get a hold of the, the footprint, the geographic footprint of the virus, of identifying the epicenters in our country, and also better understanding the dynamics of the virus while we're treating and isolating infected cases. We've also paid a lot of attention in trying to stop the community spread. Uh, and that has come from banning public gatherings, uh, difficult decisions of our banning religious activities, both Christian and Muslim. The churches and the mosques are closed in Ghana for the time being. Festivals and funerals have all been uh, prescribed. And we're encouraging the social distancing protocols and the hygiene, the washing of hands, uh, the social distancing, and also wearing face masks. 
And happily for us, happily as, well, as, as much as possible within the present context, our infection rate continues to be by 1.5% of the, of, 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 the, of the screen population. And it is remaining at this figure for some time. We're encouraged and hopefully we will see to its reduction. Clearly, a major challenge has been providing adequate, for the, adequate care for the sick. The, the strength of our public health system has been seriously exposed by this pandemic. And the need from, from years of neglect and of underinvestment in our public health system. So that is a major con con concern of ours, raising the necessary funds to strengthen our public health system and making that one of the legacies of this pandemic. Limiting also the impact of the virus on social and economic life. We've taken the, 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 the view that the peculiar circumstances of our society require us to take particular measures to look after the needy and the vulnerable. We have a, a, an alleviation program where we've had various stimulus and relief programs in providing free water, providing subsidized electricity in order to deal with the impact of, of the virus on especially uh, vulnerable segments of our society. And lastly, we believe that this, the, the, the pandemic has also given us an opportunity to scale up domestic production of the things that we need, both for uh, medical materials, uh, protective equipment, as well as uh, medicines, sanitizers, and the rest. And we believe that the, with the sufficient uh, support and inspiration from government, domestic manufacturers, local enterprises are capable of rising to the challenge to find us the opportunity to um, meet our needs from Ghana. So the conclusion from the Ghanaian experience that, I, that, that, that we have seen is that the consultative and inclusive approach is helping to uh, uh, make the decisions that we take generally uh, acceptable by the population. These are difficult times for all of us, but that is a very important consideration. In the same way that the process of aggressive testing and uh, tracing, testing, and treating uh, has been accompanied by a greater investment in our laboratories and research facilities. There's also an important lesson that we have heard. The process of locking and unlocking hotspots in our country has also been helping us in balancing the various social and economic implications of what we're doing. This has proved to be a very expensive enterprise. It's involved significant investments in our public health system. So it, it, it's, an, it's an area where we have to revisit even the Abuja Declaration about the amounts of money that we should be spending on our health system. And finally, I think it is very, very important that we tailor a Ghanaian, a specifically Ghanaian, African response to the handling of this pandemic and not necessarily copy blindly the methods and, uh, that are being adopted in countries to the north of us and, and elsewhere. For instance, uh, our scientists are very engaged in pushing forward the African manufacturing, uh, vaccine manufacturing initiative. Indeed, there's a, a Ghanaian scientist is the chair of the, of, 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 of the board of those who are uh, promoting it. We want to get to the uh, the, so the possibility that we can produce a peculiarly African vaccine to deal with the problem because the mutation of the virus in the various parts of the world is different. So we need to have our own way of, uh, of responding to it. I share very strongly the views of President Ouattara when he says that we must continue to pursue vigorously our regional agenda. And I'm also very happy to hear that the Convergence Council is going to be very soon to see where we are in, uh, in terms of the developments that have taken place and the impact they have on our goals of, of monetary union and the rest. The relief efforts that are being made on our debt, over our debt, are absolutely essential. 
and support 100% the view of President Macky Sall that the public debt we should move. Already, uh, efforts have been made under the leadership of the Ghanaian Fund and South African finance ministers to negotiate with the World Bank a debt standstill for the countries of the of the International Development Association. It, it, it's something, because for instance, in the case of Ghana, that debt standstill has meant that $500,000 million that we would have had to pay interest and in, uh, uh, cap principles this year would be standard. We need to go beyond the debt standstill. We need actual debt relief. Therefore, the efforts that are being made should get the wholehearted in support of all of us. I believe that um, the, the issue of debt relief should not just stay at public debt. The, the private debt also should be looked at. Uh, if you like, we, we can see the cancellation of the private debt as some sort of corporate social responsibility of those who are the sovereign funds who have been, who have been investing in our co continent and making considerable sums of money out of it. So we, the, 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 the debt sit, uh, matter is a matter of great urgency for us, which we need to act on immediately. We are in new, new territories. It's unusual times. And it requires that there is maximum solidarity amongst ourselves to be able to find lasting solutions. Uh, we are here at uh, the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. So take the opportunity to wish all our Muslim brothers and sisters best wishes uh, as they undertake this the month of, of, of the fast. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, I want to commend you very strongly for the initiative of this virtual summit. It's the first in the, the history of our organization. And, for, and to the chairperson of the, of the commission, uh, the president of the commission and, his, and his, his commissioners for the excellent work they did in preparing very high quality papers for our consideration. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this summit.